complete life as a, a spiritual living entity either in the spiritual world or in the material world. The Vedas are also there in the spiritual world and all the living entities there know them. And follow them because the injunctions of the Vedas are absolute truth that means they're good in the material world in the spiritual world in the past in the present in the future in any condition of life for any living entity they're unconditional that means absolute so the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead consequently The all-pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice. Can you follow the logic there? The process of sacrifice is recommended in the Vedas. And the Vedas come from Krishna, from God. So if you want to know Krishna, you follow the Vedas. It's very simple logic, actually. Almost circular logic, but not quite. Huh? The Vedas are coming from Krishna, or Narayana. So if you want to know Narayana, you have to know Vedas. And if you know Vedas, then you follow Vedas. So if you want to know God, you simply follow the Vedas. And the, the amazing thing is that if you perform this process of sacrifice, that he will reveal himself to you directly. See? So when you follow the process of sacrifice by following the principles and chanting the holy name, then he is pleased. And when he's pleased, he reveals himself. It's not something that we do. It's something that he does to us through the process of sacrifice. Huh? It's mercy. It's not something that we don't have the power to reveal God. He only has that power. We have the power to surrender and to follow his instructions. He doesn't give any instruction that's impossible or that would hurt us or anything like that. He only gives a process in the mode of goodness. Huh? You stop doing these things that cause pain to other living entities. You stop doing these things that cause pain to yourself. And you chant this holy name which gradually transforms your consciousness from material to spiritual. And then, when you're purified, when you're qualified, when you're ready, he will reveal himself. That's the process. So, Krishna sends his representative, the spiritual master, to give this instruction. And then, he also gives the instruction in the Bhagavad Gita that you find a qualified spiritual master and surrender to him. Follow his instructions, offer service to him. Uh -huh. The self-realized soul can show you the truth. That's Krishna's system. Uh, some people think that they can become self-realized independently without guru. Oh, I'll just read what's in the scriptures and I'll follow it somehow or other. I'll reach the goal. Doesn't work. Why? That's not Krishna's system. It says right in the scriptures you're supposed to find a spiritual master. That's the first thing. The first step on the actual spiritual path. So if you don't do that, how are you going to do the second step and the third step and the fourth step? You see? Just like uh, Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras, he says there's seven steps in yoga. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, uh, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. So, what is yama and niyama? Yama and niyama means what to do and what not to do. Uh, the instructions and the prohibitions. And what's the first instruction? Accept the spiritual master. See, so they're rascals. They're teaching yoga, starting with asana. Do this asana. But without doing yama and niyama, how can they get the result of asana? You see? Asana means actually sitting. That one should be able to sit very nicely and quietly and meditate, concentrate the mind with pranayama, you know, 
withdraw the mind from the sense objects by pratyahara, and so on. But they can't do any of that because they haven't done yama niyama. They haven't given up their nonsense, sense gratification, and they haven't accepted a spiritual master. So their progress is stopped. And it becomes just an exercise form. Uh, so the same thing can happen in devotional service. If someone approaches devotional service and they want the benefits of devotional service but they don't really want to surrender to a guru, what happens? It turns into religion. And in religion, we have four, four rules or maybe five rules if you count the chanting process. Uh, but in religion there's 50 rules, 500 rules. Uh, just uh, every year the ISKCON GBC holds a meeting in Mayapur and for two weeks all they do is sit around and make rules. <laughs> now they've got so many rules they can't even follow them. <laughs> they couldn't even follow the first rule. <laughs> well, they, that's the point. They didn't follow the, the original simple rules so now they have so many f rules. Yeah, this is stated in the Bible too. Huh? that the followers of Moses, they couldn't follow Ten Commandments. So now they have ten times ten times ten commandments they have to follow, which is the Mosaic Law. See? Because they were rascals. Rascals mean they don't accept a spiritual master. They don't accept direction from more intelligent or more highly realized soul. That's rascal. Because if you accept guidance from someone who knows, then you will also be successful. And in all these thousands of years, the, the Jews and Christians have not been successful in realizing God. They've been successful in material things, so to speak, relatively successful. But they haven't been successful in teaching God consciousness. What does that mean? They missed the point. They missed the simple process. Uh, they missed the first thing, which is to surrender to a spiritual master. They had a perfect spiritual master, and they killed him, or tried to kill him. Uh, and then they formed this church, the Catholic Church, and what's the first thing they did? Threw out all the spiritual knowledge. <laughs> oh, we have to keep it secret. We can't let anybody know. Huh? Well, the rascals kept such a good secret that even they forgot. <laughs> but now they're stuck. Same thing is happening in all these big organizations. They forget the simple, fundamental principle that you have to follow a bona fide spiritual master. And because of that, they get themselves into so much complexity and so much difficulty, and then they lose the ability to actually pass on the knowledge uh, because they're not following themselves. How can they pass on unless they're following? So, the Vedas are directly manifested from God. It says in the Vedas, Asya Mahato Bhutasya Navasitam etad yadrigvedo yajurvedo samavedo taravan gurusaha. The four Vedas, namely the Rig Veda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atarva Veda, are all emanations from the breathing of the great personality of Godhead. Uh, girasa. Girasa means the the source of juice. Uh, girasa, he who generates the uh, juice, the pleasure of life, actually. Rasa means more than just, the, the, the direct meaning or simple meaning is juice, like nourishing juice of a plant or something like that. But in the spiritual context it means the enjoyment of life. Everybody has to have some enjoyment of life. Otherwise they become discouraged. They become despair. Huh? They say life has no meaning. Life is empty. Well, what do they mean? Empty of what? Empty of joy. Empty of pleasure. 
So the Lord is the source of the pleasure of life. Rasa. He's girasa. He's the, the generator or the origin or the, the source of the joy of life. The French have the saying, joie de vivre, which means the joy of life. And without this joy of life, then well, what's the point of living? Why bother? Why go through all of this if there's no joy in it? Huh? Remember back back in the days, oh, you guys are probably too young. The, the, they had this rock group called the Fugs. The, who? Well, that's not their real name, but that they had to make that name so that they could... Fugs or Thugs? Fugs. Fugs. Yeah. Anyway, they had this song that they used to do. Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, Thursday, nothing. 